What's up my stats stars? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a one sample t-test for a population mean and how we could use our TID4 calculator to do all of the big work, getting that t-score, getting that p-value for us. And all we gotta do is do the, well, the simple stuff. So let's dive into a problem right now. All right, so here's the problem we're gonna look at. The makers of a popular caffeine pill want to make sure that their tablets don't contain too little caffeine. So they inspect a random sample of 35 tablets from a production batch and measure the caffeine in each of those pills. When the production is working properly, there's a mean of 220 milligrams of caffeine. The mean and standard deviation of the sample are 218 and 3.2 milligrams. Does this sample provide evidence at the 5% level that the mean amount of caffeine in the tablets is below 200 milligrams? So here's the deal. Our sample showed 218 milligrams with a standard deviation of 3.2 milligrams. Does that give us evidence that something's wrong with the machine because it's supposed to be 220 milligrams? All right, so by now, I hope everybody knows step one is naming the procedure and giving that null and alternative hypothesis. So this is a one sample t-test for the population mean amount of caffeine in all tablets produced by this company for this particular batch. Now, the first question a lot of kids ask is, whoa, 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 on my calculator, there's a one sample t or z-test. Why don't I use a z-test here? Well, when you're working with means, you can only use a z-test or z-interval when you know the standard deviation of your population. And in most cases, at least in all cases for AP statistics, we're not going to know the mean and the standard deviation of our population when we're working with inference. So that is why we have to use a t-test. When the only standard deviation we know is that of our sample, we're gonna be using a t-test, so keep that in mind. So first, the null hypothesis is that the population mean is 220 milligrams, everything is working fine, the machine is not broken at all, and the alternative is that the mean is less than 220 milligrams, and well, that means something's not working correct. So our sample did come back in 218 milligrams, but that could just be because the samples vary, or that could be because the true population mean really is less than 220 milligrams. All right, let's go ahead and move on to step two. Step two is checking those conditions. The sample must be random. The sample must be under 10% of the population to assume independence. Now, a lot of kids ask about that second condition being under 10% of the population. That condition only needs to be checked when we are sampling from a population and we do not know for sure that we're doing it with replacement. In most cases, it's without replacement and that's why we have to check that condition. All right, the third one is that the sample needs to be big enough. According to the central limit theorem, since our sample is 35, it's larger than 30, so we're okay to be using a T distribution here. Now, our T distribution will have 34 degrees of freedom because we had 35 as our sample size, minus one is 34 degrees of freedom. All right, so now comes the fun step. This is the step where the calculator is gonna really help us out. So here's me doing all the work by hand. Not a whole lot of fun, but our calculator could do it so quickly for us and all we have to worry about is doing the interpretation. So first we're gonna hit stat, then we're gonna slide over to tests, and then we're gonna select a T test. Once again, don't do a Z test unless you know the population standard deviation, which we know. Now, it's gonna ask the data, so if we actually have the amount of caffeine in every one of those 35 pills, we could put them to the calculator and do that. But we actually have the statistics, was the mean and standard deviation from our sample, so we're gonna select stats. Now, the first thing it's gonna ask for is mu um, sub zero. This is the null hypothesis. This is what it's supposed to be based on the null hypothesis, and that's gonna be not 2,220, um, 220. Then it's gonna ask for the mean. The mean of our sample was 218 milligrams. Then underneath that is the standard deviation. Our standard deviation was given to us is 3.2. That's the standard deviation of our sample. And our sample size was 35. Now, now we have to choose the alternative hypothesis. Do we believe the null, or do we believe mu, excuse me, the population mean to be not equal to, less than, or greater than? And I'm pretty sure the question was pretty obvious that we were concerned that it was less than the 220 from the null hypothesis. All right, go ahead and hit calculate, and we are good to go. There is that T-score, the same T-score I got there by showing all my work by hand, but listen, calculator can do it all for us, negative 3.697, and then it also gives us that P-value of 0 .000382. Now, the calculator is awesome. It doesn't do any rounding. It keeps everything nice and perfect, so these are going to be the absolute best values. All we have to do now is focus on the interpretation and the conclusion. 
Now that p-value is well below either 1% or 5% coming in at 0 0.000382. Make sure you notice that e to the negative 4, that's what told me to move the decimal four times to the left. And because that p-value is way below 1% or 5%, I actually think the original problem said 5%, but it doesn't matter, it's so low, I will reject the null hypothesis. There is significant evidence that the mean amount of caffeine in the tablets is less than 220 milligrams. Production of the pills should be stopped and the production should be fixed so that the mean amount can be back to 220 milligrams. So again, 218 didn't seem like a lot lower, but it was based on our data. But the cool thing is our calculator could do so much of the big work here, getting us that T-score and getting us that P-value. That's where a lot of kids fumble around with formulas and get the wrong numbers. But if you know how to use the calculator and literally all you have to enter is in the statistics, you're going to get this question correct.